around the corner. UFC 284. It's about to go down. There's so much uh, going into this one. You know, obviously you got number one pound for pound versus number two pound for pound. I think we're both on like some of the longest winning streaks in the UFC. Records, uh, you know, like 25 and one and 23 and one and something like that. So it's, there's a lot on the line. One they'll be talking about for years to come. Makhachev and Volkanovski for the undisputed lightweight title. Let's get into the co-main event first. Josh Emmett and Yair Rodriguez. It's a tricky one. People, I've had so many people ask me, you know, who, who you got? Who do I have winning this fight? It's a tricky one for me. I can see both winning. I can see uh, a route to victory for both. Johnson so far. Yeah. Oh! I think if Josh Emmett fights the right fight, mixes it up, he's a strong, powerful dude. If he starts using a bit of the wrestling and, uh, you know, even if he's not getting takedowns, but threatening the takedowns, um, or even being able to control him, little things like that. I think that is a path to victory. He doesn't usually use uh, his wrestling, he likes to use his hands, he's obviously powerful. Yair Rodriguez is crafty on his feet. Yeah, you're just so f Oh, round kick, wow. he got him, it's Just it. right there. I, I believe if it's just a stand-up battle, I can still see both winning. I still see uh, uh, Josh being able to catch him. But if I had to lean to, towards someone in the striking department, it'll probably be Yair Rodriguez. He had a bit of a game plan, a bit of strategy, and, and capitalized on it well. Uh, didn't have a backward step, uh, which I thought he would, and I thought was gonna be a, a nightmare for him if he did that, and he didn't. So uh, obviously that was a bit of his game plan. He was able to stick to it. It wasn't just any game plan, it was a game plan to to fight in the in fire, if that makes sense. So if you're gonna, there's a difference between sticking to a game plan and being safe the whole time, than sticking to a game plan and being under a firefight. I feel like he's someone that can. He's capable of sticking to a game plan and doing what needs to be done. That's pretty much where I'm going with it. Josh Emmett, I believe he can as well. I mean, the big, uh, powerful shots on the inside will definitely, definitely help. But I mean, the thing is with that, you need to approach it differently. You can't just plot your way in, just walk yourself into range and fire. Again, someone like Gary Rodriguez, he's gonna make you pay with kicks, front kicks, spin kicks, and things like that. You need to be crafty in your approach to, to getting in the distance you're comfortable with. If I had to pick or lean towards someone, I think Josh Emmett has more tools to win. But I feel like it's gonna be a stand-up fight. And that makes me wanna to lean towards Yair Rodriguez. So you can see I'm pretty much 50-50 on this one. It depends who has the right game plan, right? Because uh, I can say one thing going off their last fights, so they could come out and fight a completely different fight. That's the thing about fighting, right? So look at where the value is, I guess. That's where you're gonna go, especially for a fight like this. You're gonna go with where the value is. Because I, I believe that is a 50-50 type of fight. The UFC is heading back to Australia. Get into all the Aussies before I get into the main event. Your, you know, your Jack Jenkins, uh, Shannon Ross, Josh Coolabow, uh, Justin Tuffer, Tyson, Pedro, Jack Della. Obviously, you've got the, the boys at CKB as well. So yeah, my bad. Shane, Shane Young, sorry about that, that's another one. I think I got everyone there. You ever heard of Crute? Yeah, Crute's the man. You ever heard of Jimmy Crute? Yeah, he's great. And, and, oh! This is an event back in Australia. It's been like three years. You could imagine how the Aussies are gonna, gonna be, you know, they're gonna be fired up. They've had to fight for the last three years, over three years, in either Apex with no crowds, or in someone, you know, in another country. They get to do a whole camp here in front of a home crowd. So you can see they're gonna be firing. It's easy to be on when you've got the right crowd in front of you, you know what I mean? Like it is, uh, it definitely can give you an edge. If you've got to go through a bit of adversity, you've got your home crowd advantage, you've got your family, your friends screaming, you can hear the roar, you're gonna get back to your feet. You're gonna do what you gotta to do to, to, to get through it, you know what I mean? So it does give you a bit of an advantage. I think I got told they're all in the same corner because they're all higher ranked. So this is showing you where the Aussies are right now. Some of the Aussies that are, that are fighting, you know, again, it used to be, it was like we used to have numbers in the UFC. Now we're proper contenders, we are winning fights and we're winning big. We've got champions, we've got you name it. But that's just showing you where the fight game is here in Australia and New Zealand, so. For ben Vickers there in West oh! Australia. The I will talk about Jack Della, Randy Brown fighting in the fighting in the on the main card. That's going to be a fun fight. Uh, Jack Della hometown. I'm glad he was able to do the quick turnaround. He deserves it, and uh, I think this is a great fight for him. I think this is a a bit more of a challenge. This Randy Brown, from what I remember, I do remember his last fight. He's very tall. He's a rangy type of guy. Very long. 
Uh, obviously, Jack likes to stay in the pocket and, and work. He works his jab, he works it well, but he likes to put, he's a pressure fighter and he's good at it. So uh, even with rangy guys, when you know how to do your good pressure, you can make it really hard for guys like that. Even with rangy guys, when you know how to do your good pressure, you can make it really hard for guys like that. But with some guys, they can be very dangerous as well. They might want to be rangy, but as you come in and come in aggressive, they've got knees up the centre, uh, you know, big high kicks and big uh, shots coming in. They ain't afraid to throw them. It can get dangerous as well. But if you know how to pressure like Jack does, I feel like that's going to be his advantage. I think this is going to be a good showing for him. You know, his team to see, himself to see, because this is going to be a, a calculated rangy fighter that he's going to have to use some extra tools and uh, maybe have to go through a little bit of adversity with trying to find that range that he's comfortable or wear him or wear his opponent down and things like that. So this will be good for him and I think uh, he'll come out with, with the victory. So I'm looking forward to that. But the champion Alexander Volkanovsky with a signature performance tonight Let's talk about the main event, myself and Islam. Yeah, well, I can't give too much away, right? People are like, oh, how are you preparing for Islam? We know what, how to prepare for Islam. Let's be real. A lot of people going, oh, his striking's underrated. Yeah, it probably is underrated. Like, you know, it doesn't look as flashy. He's probably a lot more calculated than people say. But I mean, that's not, I've, I've dealt with a lot higher level uh, striking. But the difference is you've got a real wrestling element and uh, the wrestling threat element that's involved. So that's where things can get more challenging. But I'm the type of fighter that I don't hesitate. I'm not gonna hesitate because he's a wrestler. I'm gonna hold back because he's a wrestler. These hands are gonna be flying. I guarantee you, I'm gonna be looking to put someone, my movement's gonna be there. I'm gonna make a half rip. My movement's gonna make the takedown hard enough. And then not just that, obviously, if he does come in, I, I trust in my takedown defense to worry about that when that happens. I can't be worried about the takedown. I can't be worried and be threatened so much about that. It makes me hesitate. It makes me slow. It makes me sick and guess myself. That ain't happening. That ain't the fighter I am. You see that in a lot of uh, your Khabibs and Islam's opponents and like these high wrestle, you're even your Hamzat and things like that. With guys like that that have such a wrestling pedigree, a lot of people don't want to pull the trigger and they get worried. They get caught themselves. That ain't going to happen with me. That you're going to see the same sharp Alexander Volkanovsky that you've always seen. Except this guy's gonna be a power, more powerful. He's gonna to need to calculate on his feet because, again, when I'm on my feet, if he even tries to threaten the takedown, obviously I'm gonna do what I can to not even let him get anywhere near me. I'm gonna, if he does end up getting me, remember, I have to have that mentality that it could go down. I need to prepare for that. Don't be surprised if it doesn't. Don't be surprised if I stop every takedown and I don't even let him get close and I put hands on him. Don't be surprised. I'm not saying that's exactly how it's gonna be. I won't be surprised if it is. Because that's what you need to do in preparation. You need to prepare properly. You need to prepare for the worst. And that's what I do. That's what I've always done. No matter who's in front of me, no matter how much better I feel than anyone, you always give them the benefit of the doubt. You have to. And that's why you always see me prepared. That's why you always see me ready. And that's why you'll see me ready February 11th, February 12th here in Australia. My prediction is you're gonna see my hand get raised. I want a finish. Like I said, I want to calculate. I want to get that. I really want to set a statement for that champ champ against someone like Islam. Go there and shock the world and shock, shock them in devastating fa fashion. So that'll have people talking about it forever. That's what I want. I'm prepared to go five rounds of war, but I want that finish. Really looking forward to this fight. This is a big opportunity for me to really take over and uh, really set my name in the history books and really, uh, you know, we talk about legacy, this is it. This is why I take these fights. A lot of people like look at it as, oh, risks and challenges and all that type of stuff. Yeah, it is, but I'm the right guy for the job because I will prepare properly. I will prepare how I'm meant to. I'll do what needs to be done and I'll find a way every single time. And people will remember that because of the guys I'm facing, the people I fight, the people I want, the people I choose. He's got that belt. And that's obviously what I want, but not just that. I want that challenge. I want that puzzle that people uh, don't think can be figured out. I'm gonna figure it out. I've got the confidence, I've got the belief, and I'm gonna make it happen. My team's got me ready. I'm prepared mentally and physically. Now it's time to do work.